Isn't it nice to watch TV sometimes? Pfft, I'm just kidding. I'm watching YouTube. But did you notice that while most of your TV remote's buttons are useful to control the functions of your TV, others are completely useless. At least for me. So in this video, I will show you how I repurpose such useless buttons to control the LED lighting behind my TV. Firstly, I will talk a bit about the theory of controlling things with a remote. And then I will construct the main project around an Arduino Nano for you to remake. Let's get started. First of all, let's inspect the remote and see how it communicates with the TV. When I press a button, you can see that a LED in front flickers rapidly. You can see it on camera, but it is actually not visible with the human eye, because this is infrared light. Let's dig a bit deeper by opening up this older remote that I had laying around. And while I do this, let me tell you that infrared light is really close to the visible light and starts with a wavelength of around 700 nanometers. We use it in such remotes because it is easy to produce, it doesn't cost much, it is invisible to us and they used this method for quite a long time, so they know how to make it work. Ok, the old remote is ready for some testing. I soldered a wire to the anode and the cathode of the IR LED and hooked them up to my oscilloscope. I hooked up the remote to my power supply and as soon as I hit a button the LED flickers. And on the oscilloscope we can see this madness. It's not easily explained, but in a nutshell it's all about the length of those voltage bursts and the pause between those, which represents the data or code we want to transmit. But something seems weird, let's zoom in a bit. And we can see here that the voltage is not constantly high in those bursts. It turns on and off with a frequency of 36 kHz, which is also called the carrier frequency. But why this crap, you may ask? Well, it's simple. Infrared light is not rare. It's everywhere. The sun produces it and all kinds of other light sources as well. That is why we have to make our signal special, so that we can distinguish it from all this other IR light. With that being said, let's talk about the receiver. Those are mostly hidden in your TV. I got those two from old DVD players and you can easily salvage your own IR receiver from other gadgets you may have laying around. Or you buy one online, they are not expensive. This one is a V4838 and with the help of almighty Google, I found a datasheet for it. There we see that it works with 5 volts, awesome for Arduino. We can see the pinout with VS, ground and data out and also a block diagram which tells us that there is an amplifier, filter and demodulator inside. And this means we get rid of the carrier frequency and receive a beautiful data signal on pin 1, which is suitable for a microcontroller to process. But we still don't know the data format of this signal. The data format defines which constellation of burst and pause represent 0 and 1 in the code. The most popular ones are NEC, RC5, RC6 and many, many more. So to make things easier, let's use a great IR library for the Arduino. As always, don't forget to download it if you want to build this too. Let's wire up the Arduino Nano and the receiver on a breadboard so that I can input my data signal on pin 11. I used the example IR Rec demo and just uploaded the code without any changes. If we open the serial monitor and press a useless button on our remote, we can see the hexadecimal code for this button. And with a little bit of code editing, we can assign a task for the Arduino every time this button is pressed. Like lighting up a LED. I chose the digital pin 9 for this job and just added a green LED on the breadboard for testing purposes. Now I just upload the code and it works like a charm. Awesome! But how about dimming the LED as well? I chose two more useless buttons and used the hexadecimal code of those to increase or decrease a variable which controls the analog write function of pin 9. This is how the final code looks like. And the final test was also a big success. But instead of the green LED, I want to control this around 2 meter long RGB LED strip, which I can obviously not control with just a digital pin. 
I also need a N channel MOSFET which can handle the 2M current draw. I chose this IRL C44N which works without any problems during the first test. Now it is time to move this project to a strip board. Here are all the parts that I used. And of course I also created a schematic and board layout for you guys, so you can recreate this project. Check out the instructable side for this. But you will also need a power source. I got this 12V 5A power brick, which is a definite overkill. 3A would have been enough. And always double check which pin of a DC jack is plus 12V and which is ground, because nobody likes reverse voltage. At first I built the circuit itself without the external parts like IR receiver and LED strip. It was a pretty easy job, but always make sure that you have proper interruptions between the copper traces. And I also needed to solder this DC jack sideways because I was too stupid to enlarge the holes of the PCB. But it works fine. After the circuit was done, I got the IR receiver and soldered a 100 microfarad decoupling capacitor between VS and ground. Then I soldered one wire to each pin. Don't forget shrinking tube. And I soldered the other side of the wires to the main PCB. I connected the three cathodes of the LED strip together and used thicker wire to connect the anode to plus 12 volts and the cathode to the pin 2 or drain of the MOSFET. And the board is done. Just a quick test at the end and everything still works fine. Time to mount the strip. So I used this double sided tape in combination with hot glue to secure the strip to the back of my TV cupboard. Or however you call that. I also secured the PCB with hot glue and the IR receiver. But make sure that it peeks out a bit so it can properly receive the signal. And it is done. Now I can enjoy TV, I mean YouTube, and turn on the lights without ever needing to get off my couch. As always, thanks for watching. Maybe you want to check out my Facebook site to see what I'm up to. Don't forget to like, share and subscribe, that would really help me out. Stay creative and I will see you next time.